Today I will tell you about a literary work which is very popular in Italy, but less so abroad. I'll explain the gist of the book, the themes, and why you should consider reading it. The Betrothed, known in Italy as I Promessi Sposi, is an Italian novel by Alessandro Manzoni, which was released in different versions between 1827 and 1842. It is one of the most widely read works in the Italian language. To learn more about Italian and Sicilian literature, consider subscribing. Italy is gripped by Spanish rule in 1628, whereas Venice is an independent republic. Renzo and Lucia live near Lecco on Lake Como in northern Italy. They have plans to marry. The local priest, Don Abondio, is intimidated by two thugs the night before the marriage ceremony as he walks home. The thugs warn him the local baron, Don Rodrigo, has ordered the wedding must not happen. Renzo arrives to be wed and is stunned to learn that the marriage has been postponed. Don Abondio has made up an excuse. Eventually a furious Renzo learns that Don Rodrigo is the reason and the reason is because he is also a keen admirer of Lucia, the bride-to-be. Lucia's mother, Agnese, suggests Renzo talks to the lawyer, Dr. Azzecca Calbugli in Lecco. The lawyer explains threats to procure or prevent marriages are against the law, but learning of the involvement of Don Rodrigo, he sends Renzo away. Lucia seeks assistance from Friar Christopher from the monastery of Pescarenico. Friar Cristoforo immediately confronts Don Rodrigo at his mansion, finding him dining with his cousin, Count Attilio, the mayor and Dr. Azzecca Cadbulli. Don Rodrigo is enraged by the friar's intervention and sends him away. But of course, he also offers to assist Cristoforo at some point in an attempt to gain his loyalty. As Friar Cristoforo returns with the bad news, Agnese decides to take matters into her own hands. Two people could declare themselves married before a priest and two independent witnesses. Renzo offered his friend, Donio, 25 lira if he could help. Lucia and Agnese are visited by beggars, who actually are Don Rodrigo's men in disguise. They plan to case the house with a view to return later. That night, Agnese, Tonio and his brother, Gervaso, distract Don Abondio's servant, Perpetua, allowing Lucia and Renzo to sneak in the building. Realising the plan, the priest drops the lamp and they struggle in the dark. Don Rodrigo's men returned to find Lucia's house empty. A boy called Menico, sent by Friar Cristoforo, arrives and is immediately seized. Fearing their plans have been betrayed, Don Rodrigo's men flee quickly in confusion. Menico proceeds to warn Agnese, Lucia and Renzo not to return home, and instead they head to the monastery. Friar Cristoforo hands Renzo two letters, one a letter of introduction to the friar in Milan, and another to arrange accommodation in Monza. Lucia is entrusted to the nun Gertrude, whose behaviour is unusual. Gertrude was from an important local family and was sent to the convent by her father. Gertrude would learn eventually that life as a nun did not suit her. She was pressurised by her father and fearing a scandal, Gertrude had reluctantly agreed to enter the convent of Monza, nicknamed La Signora, the Lady. Gertrude soon fell for Egidio, 
an unscrupulous associate of the notorious local baron called Innominato, the unnamed. Egidio and Gertrude soon became lovers, and when another nun realised this, they killed the hapless witness. Unable to find the friar at the monastery in Milan, Renzo wanders the city which is suffering famine. A bakery is attacked by a mob, who then proceed to lynch a local governor in charge of supplies. The local governor is actually saved by Ferrer, the Grand Chancellor, who announces he is taking the local governor to prison. Renzo helps Ferrer as he passes through the crowd, before joining an animated discussion which in the end attracts the attention of a police agent who is looking for troublemakers. The police agent tries to lead Renzo directly to the best inn, when actually he's trying to take him to prison. Instead, Renzo is tired and stops at a local inn, where after a few drinks he blurts out his real name and address. In the morning, Renzo is handcuffed by the notary and bailiffs who lead him away. Renzo shouts he is being punished for his earlier heroism, and with the help of a sympathetic crowd, he escapes Milan. He heads for Bergamo, part of the most serene republic of Venice, and the safety of his, co his cousin's house, Bortolo, safe from the reach of the Spanish authorities in Milan. Renzo realises how much trouble he is in. He now walks at night to avoid attention, crossing the river Adda. Eventually reaching his cousin's house, he is met by Antonio Rivolta. At this point, orders for Renzo's arrest arrive in his home village of Lecco. News of Renzo's situation reaches the convent, and Lucia is relieved to learn that Renzo is safe with his cousin. Hearing no news from Friar Cristoforo, Agnese travels to Pescarenico, where she learns the friar has been summoned to Rimini. Don Rodrigo and, and Count Attilio have actually hatched a plot using their various influences. Don Rodrigo is now free to kidnap Lucia from the convent, aided by Linominato, the unnamed. Gertrude, now blackmailed by Egidio, her lover, sends Lucia on an errand outside the convent, where she is promptly abducted. Lucia is imprisoned at the castle of the Unnamed. The Unnamed is troubled by the sight of Lucia. She triggers painful memories of his past and he agonises all night about his predicament. Lucia, accepting her situation, decides to renounce Renzo if she is saved from her predicament. The following day, throngs of people walk past the Unnamed's house to listen to the Archbishop of Milan, Cardinal Federico Borromeo. The unnamed decides to go meet Cardinal Federico Borromeo, and after this meeting, he dramatically changes his views on a number of things. The unnamed announces his reign of terror is over and returns Lucia home under his own protection. Don Rodrigo is stunned by this act of defiance his position is immediately weakened. Don Abondio is chastised by the Archbishop. A desperate Lucia still worries for Renzo, who is now topic of a diplomatic conflict between the Spanish in Milan and the Venetian Republic and Bergamo. An interfering wealthy local woman, Donna Prasede, presses Lucia into her household and declares Renzo a good-for-nothing lowlife. In this period, the Thirty Years' War between the Habsburgs of Austria, Spain and the French House of Bourbon only piles on the misery for the population. War rages across northern Italy between France and the Holy Roman Empire. And as a result, Milan is swamped by beggars and the sick as the price of bread soars. German armies led by Count Rambaldo di Colalto attack Italy 
causing untold damage through looting and destruction. Agnese, Don Abondio and Perpetua flee to the sanctuary of the unnamed territory. Their home village of Lecco is sacked and pillaged by mercenaries. The plague of 1630 is devastating for Milan. Renzo, recovering from the plague, returns to Lecco to find only death and destruction. The Warrant and Don Rodrigo are now long forgotten. He learns Lucia is now in Milan. Renzo is stunned to see the terrible state of Milan. His regional clothes create suspicion in the city that he is a foreign agent, perhaps spreading plague. He now learns that Lucia is at the Lazaretto of Milan, along with a number of other victims of the plague. Friar Cristoforo reunites Renzo and Lucia, but only after Renzo visits and forgives the ailing Don Rodrigo. In return, the friar absolves Lucia of her earlier vow of celibacy. Agnese, Lucia and Renzo return to Lecco, where the young pair are eventually married by Don Abondio. The couple quickly set off for a fresh start in Bergamo. This is one of the most widely read Italian novels, second only to Dante's Divine Comedy. It is considered a masterpiece of Italian literature. Many of the expressions and quotes from the book are in common use in today's Italian. The book is about love, power, evil, injustice for the poor, hypocrisy, heroism and fatalism. The poor have to endure adversity in the hope of divine justice, but only in the afterlife. The novel interestingly focuses on the inner musings of the characters, their own perspectives. The writer Manzoni leaves the reader to draw their own conclusions. The Betrothed has some similarities with Walter Scott's historic novel, Ivanhoe. During the early 19th century, what would have later become standard Italian was still very much evolving. Manzoni initially wrote the work using Florentine dialect in the same way that Camilleri uses Sicilian in the Montalbano books today. But he later removed these regional Florentine variations from his work. I Promessi Sposi was made into an opera by Ponchielli and Pet Petrella. Numerous film versions of I Promessi Sposi exist. A modern opera was performed in 2010. Even the Pope, Pope Francis, suggested this was useful reading for couples hoping to marry.